CGTN, China Global Television Network. The first case of the current outbreak of monkeypox was identified in May 2022. And since then, the World Health Organization has been tracking cases around the world in countries that don't normally report the virus. The rising number of cases prompted the WHO to declare the virus a global health emergency in July. And with countries still recovering from the COVID-19 pandemic, this spike in monkeypox infections has raised concerns around the world. This week on the show, we ask what exactly the monkeypox virus is and why has this outbreak been so much more severe than in previous years. We also look at the stigma attached to the virus and Africa's preparedness to deal with another disease outbreak. I'm Penina Karibe. Welcome to Talk Africa. Scientists are baffled by the current outbreak of the virus in Europe and North America and the speed at which it's spreading. Prior to this outbreak, the US CDC considered this a rare disease with a low mortality rate. Before we begin our discussion, my colleague Benji Heyer brings us this report on the impact of the current outbreak. This is a significant move from the World Health Organization and this highest level of category is normally reserved for the sort of viruses like COVID-19, Ebola, the Zika virus uh, and also polio. What it does is uh, raise alerts across the world that this virus is one that needs to be taken seriously and acknowledge that it requires a global response. Uh, and, and the reason that we should be noting all of this, of course, uh, is that um, there's potential for further um, outbreaks. And, and that's really the warning from the WHO, which is this could be the start of, of spreading elsewhere. It still notes uh, that the risk to uh, a global uh, outbreak uh, remains low and the risk to uh, interference of international travel in, in the same way there was during the coronavirus pandemic, that remains low too. Uh, that's because this virus is very different to the one that we're now familiar with, COVID-19. The first is that it, it's a much less efficient transmitter. It's not an STD, but it does spread mainly through contaminated services or through bodily fluids, through sexual intercourse, for example, predominantly thus far between the homosexual community. But it's important to remember, of course, that uh, same-sex relationships are still illegal in many countries around the world and therefore prejudice can act as a barrier to help. This is an outbreak that can be stopped with the right strategies in the right groups. It's therefore essential that all countries work closely with communities of men who have sex with men to design and deliver effective information and services and to adapt measures that protect the health, human rights and dignity of affected communities. Stigma and discrimination can be as dangerous as any virus. And there's something else to note too, which is that monkeypox is something for which the medical community has countermeasures already. Uh, the smallpox vaccine, whilst in short supply currently, is one that could also be used for this, and it offers 85% protection against monkeypox. Joining me now to take a closer look at what monkeypox is and why this outbreak has been so severe are from Brazzaville in Congo, Dr. Mary Stephen, the Africa Regional Technical Officer at the World Health Organization. From Port of Strum, South Africa, we have Professor Jeffrey Mpahlele, the Deputy Vice Chancellor for Research and Innovation at the Northwest University. He's also a virologist. And from Ibadan City in Nigeria, we have Professor Oyewale Tomori, President of the Nigerian Academy of Science and also former Vice Chancellor of Redeemers University. Welcome everyone to the program. Dr. St Stephen, I will begin with you because I want to start with the origins of this disease. I've heard that it has very little to do with monkeys. Yes, it was discovered in monkeys. And yes, it does infect monkeys, but apparently they're not the reservoir, the primary reservoir for the disease. So where did it originate from? Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, monkeypox um, was detected among research monkeys uh, in 1958. 
but following that, cases, the first human case was uh, dictated in the Democratic Republic of Congo in 1970. And since then, we have been uh, uh, receiving reports of cases across uh, Western and Central African countries that are endemic uh, for the virus. So as it is right now, there are still uncertainties with regards to the natural history of uh, monkeypox and the exact reservoir of the virus is still not uh, known yet. Uh, so more research is needed. I believe uh, uh, Professor Jeffrey and Professor Tomori would add to this as well. But there are other animals that are susceptible to this uh, virus, like uh, squirrels, the different types of squirrels, Gambian pouch rats, domice, and other prim uh, non-human primates, which of course include uh, apes, monkeys, and, and, and other animals. So, but the, the main reservoir for, for the virus is still unknown and more research is needed uh, to understand better. Right, so Professor Mpahlele coming to you, talk to us about how this disease is transmitted. Oh yes, um, and thanks for having me. Uh, so, a uh, monkeypox um, um, disease uh, is transmitted uh, mainly through uh, close physical contact uh, with infected person. Uh, but the virus can actually be found um, on the um, mucous membranes um, of the eyes, um, the nose, as well as um, um, as well as the mouth. Uh, so, obviously, this means that um, some uh, respiratory secretions uh, can also transmit the virus, but largely uh, the virus is transmitted through uh, close physical contact um, with, uh, with an infected person. That is the main route of transmission, especially when the person is, um, is at a stage um, of, um, of the rash uh, or lesions, uh, because this is when the person is really uh, highly infectious. Right, and just to follow up on that, Professor Mpahlele, we're now hearing increasingly that there are uh, a lot more cases being detected amongst men who have sexual relations with men. Why is this? Well, um, it, it could be um, exactly because, um, you know, um, if uh, there is a close physical contact uh, between men who have sex with men, um, the virus can be transmitted. And uh, the other thing is that um, um, the, the, the virus uh, can be transmitted before lesions appear. Uh, so that is actually um, another danger because um, uh, quite often uh, is the lesions that tell, that tell us that uh, you are infected with the virus. Uh, but without lesions, um, you remain clinically silent or asymptomatic, and uh, it's not easy to tell uh, if you are infected. But I don't want to call it um, a virus that uh, is exclusively uh, transmitted, um, you know, in men who have sex with men. Uh, it can just be transmitted uh, in anyone uh, who has got uh, close physical contact with uh, um, with with infected person. Okay, uh, Professor Tomori, Nigeria is no stranger to to, the, to this disease. In fact, I recall in 2017 there was an outbreak in the country. Uh, talk to us about the fatality rate of monkeypox. Just how dangerous is it? Well, first of all, uh, soon after DR Congo had the first human case in 1970, Nigeria had one in 19 two cases in 1971 and one in 1978. But then nothing happened in between until 2017 when we had the big epidemic, uh, which has been going on since then. There are two, what you call two clades of the virus. Uh, there's one, the West African type, and there's also the uh, Central African type, or Central and South African type. The one from the West Africa is less severe. Mortality is just about 1%, while the one in the South African, Central African region, which would take anything from Cameroon down to, the, to South Africa, will be in a range of about 10% mortality. It's a more severe infection than we have with the West African type. Uh, so, Prof, which is the one that we're now seeing being reported globally? The global one actually has been linked to the West African type. It has been suggested that uh, there have been a few importations of monkeypox from Nigeria to different countries, Israel, UK, uh, and even as far as Singapore. It is believed that the what they are getting in UK now or in the Western region now actually was started from the 2017 one, 
which have been spreading unknown within the Western, uh, Western region, but then now uh, amplified and escalated by the uh, male sex to, with male activities following the um, uh, big, big festival that took place somewhere in Spain and some other places. Initially, when it, it happened and you're having popping up in different places, everybody was scared, what's happening? Is this another COVID? But then when it is now known that there was a common source infection in which people went there and were now going back to their country, they became the source of those infections there. So now at least there's a little, with better understanding, we know how it came about. And just like uh, Jeffrey said, it requires deep, I mean, a uh, real close contact. And of course, there's nothing more more of contact than direct contact than sexual relationship. So Dr. Stephen, coming to you, like you said, when you're talking about the origins of this disease, monkeypox is not new. It was discovered in the late 1950s. And yet it's only now that we have the World Health Organization declaring it a global health emergency. Why the concern now after all these decades of having this disease in the continent? Yes, um, so the mechanism under the international uh, health regulations for declaration of public health of, intima, uh, of uh, international concern, it's, it's, it's a public health event uh, that is extraordinary in nature, uh, but also poses the risk of spread to other countries and requires a coordinated international response. Um, if, you, if, you, if you look at the data, or concerning what is happening with regards to the monkeypox, we have more than 19,000 cases globally in more than 78 countries. So you can see that it has spread to so, so, so many countries. And part of the things like Prof. Tomori just said, is because of these new uh, ways that the, the, the virus is spreading among men who have sex uh, with men, especially in countries that are non-endemic and they have not reported monkey, monkeypox uh, virus before in the Europe, uh, in the United States, as well as uh, uh, in, in, in Canada. And for us in Africa, what we need is to leverage this momentum to ramp up our prevention and control measures for this disease that has been neglected for decades on the continent. Right, so Professor Tomori coming to you, we've had several states in the US declare a state of emergency in a bid to try and curb this, this, this breakout. But talk to us about how a full-blown outbreak of monkeypox would look like and how best would that be dealt with? Uh, thank you very much. I, I think we also must be kind of careful about this issue of declaration of state of emergency. I wanted to talk on that before we go into it because there's a lot of lesson for us in Africa about that. The declaration of, of public health of international emergency, uh, to me, was a bit too late for Africa even too late for Europe itself. It came at a time when Europe had taken decision on what to do, We're not waiting for WHO to declare a fake. Unfortunately, we in Africa, we wait for WHO to take action before. Mm -hmm. Before it becomes an international emergency, it is first a national emergency. And that's where I think Africa should come in, not wait for WHO to declare an international, when it has ravaged us for the last 30, 40 years. I think that's the lesson I think for us in Africa to learn. Now, what does a full-blown thing do? Once you in, in, introduce, I mean, you identify the case, you isolate the case, and you keep uh, re reduce contact. It's not really a major problem. I mean, let's let's be let's be let, let's talk about this. Of all the cases we are getting in Europe, you find ninety-nine percent of them are associated with the same individuals who had it from the beginning. So it's, it's that direct contact. If you limit the contact. If you identify as quickly as possible, limit the contact, you can actually, this, this is a self-limiting disease. And the panic we are getting around the world is because we have not done the right thing. Rolling out vaccine is not the solution to it. Rolling out, I mean, what you need is proper use surveillance, good identification as little as possible, isolation of the, of the cases, re reducing direct contact between people. And you can nip this problem in the body. But let's face it directly so that we know where we're going and not going to the panic that we're getting all over the world now. Right. Uh, Dr. Stephen, let me get back to you. We listened to uh, Professor Mpahlele talk to us about the similarities of this current outbreak with the previous ones and also the differences. And what I'd like to know is what do scientists at this particular moment know about this outbreak and what are they still trying to find out? Yeah, so as we mentioned earlier, there are still quite a, a lot of uh, unknowns around uh, this outbreak that is uh, 
presenting in a different way from from what we used to know um first of all like i said the 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 the, the transmission among people men who have sex uh, with men that needs to be understood the main reservoir for the virus we still don't know so this uh, uh needs to be understood as well and the, the mechanism with which it is now spreading through this new uh, means of transmission needs a uh, better understanding so there are still a lot of research to do to have um, answers to some of these questions uh, but of course uh, this issue of uh, the vaccine that is available that was previously used for for monkeypox the antiviral treatments all this uh, we will need further uh, uh, research in these areas as well to explore more options that could be available to the world for for the prevention and control of, of this monkeypox uh, virus but when you find um infection outside these endemic countries is normally linked to travel to these in endemic countries but now like uh, Prof. summary said earlier it's possible that it was it was uh, um introduced into this population and was spreading slowly and uh, the world didn't know about it until um the cases just uh, became so much within this special group of people and then uh, uh, that's what uh, actually stimulated this um uh, uh, um, increased action for, for this uh, monkeypox uh, outbreak. All right, we're going to take a short break and when we come back, we'll take a closer look at Africa's preparedness for widespread disease outbreaks. Stay with us. Welcome back to Talk Africa. Still with me are Dr. Mary Stephen, Professor Jeffrey Mpahlele, and Professor Oyewale Tomori. Now, before the break, we looked at what monkeypox is and some reasons why its spread uh, has been so rampant. So let's now look at how prepared Africa is to deal with the disease outbreaks. And I'll come to you, uh, Professor Tomori, because you said something that was very important just before we went to the break. You said that Africa doesn't have to wait until the World Health Organization declares a global health emergency for it to take action. So the question is, how prepared is the continent for for this pandemic, and not just this uh, monkeypox pandemics, but just any other. Yeah, thank you very much. I, I, I'm glad you, you brought that up because to me, uh, it is a lesson we learn from this that is more important. Any disease anywhere that is neglected will spread everywhere. Africa, monkeypox came with us, 1970, right from 1920 in the 80s. Uh, DR Congo has been having thousands of cases. Then Nigeria came in 2017, and apparently, you know, we, we kept quiet and we didn't do anything about it. And until now, the, the, the behavior of change is bringing it up, amplifying the situation. We, we didn't have to wait for that. And I made a mention of the fact that the U.S. did not wait for WHO to declare an emergency before they, they started rolling out the vaccine in their stock. So we in Africa, you know, need to look at our own. We first, this is a national emergency before it becomes international. It is time for us to begin to prepare and not wait for anything. Our country is done, and we have the resources. We have the people. It's just putting our priorities right, putting the money in the right place, and we can be better. We just finished with the COVID, COVID-19. Well, why, why, why should, I mean, we should be much better prepared. How many laboratories in Africa can test for monkeypox? There are not that many, even after all the laboratories we've built up for COVID. These are some of the issues. How do we sustain the things we have built? So that not every disease outbreak comes in, we start from beginning again. Sustaining, I mean, getting funding to sustain this without waiting for external aid. Uh, the questions that have been raised, for example, wh where is the host? Where's the national reservoir of, of monkeypox? It has been with us for 50 years, we don't know. And how much does it cost us to go into the field and find out what it is? We are waiting for Europe to come and do that for us. That's not what it should be. Professor Mpahlele, listening to Professor Tumori talk about Africa having the resources, Africa having lived with this disease for 50 years, and still not much progress has been made in terms of just even 
basically discovering more about this disease. And so the question is, how much is Africa investing in research, in training, in partnership even with other communities, the international community, for instance, to just move this forward? That is actually the problem, uh, because um, if you look at um, um, our investment um, in research, um, as, as um, a comparison of um, GDP, um, it's not ideal uh, at this stage. And um, it's not just about one country. I think uh, multiple countries um, are, are culprits uh, on this. Uh, but um, the most important thing uh, is that um, the African countries should uh, scale up capacity uh, to detect infectious diseases, and uh, not just uh, you know to be in a reactive mode uh, when you have got a particular infectious disease, uh, but uh, be able to have capacity. To a certain extent, I think uh, Africa uh, CDC has helped um, to build capacity regionally um, to to try and uh, scale up you know labor laboratory detection of infectious diseases. But um, you 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 need each and every country. Uh, to be able to have capacity uh, to detect infectious diseases. Because um, without laboratory capacity, we will always be caught uh, flat-footed. Uh, because most of the infectious diseases, um, the diagnosis, yes, you can do it clinically, uh, but confirmation is usually uh, through laboratory diagnosis. So that is really key. And then the second thing is to invest in research uh, so that uh, the diseases which are more common, endemic, and prevalent uh, in Africa, we are able to study them uh, in detail. Um, for example, we had uh, the monkeypox virus for many, many years, as um, uh, Prof. Tomori indicated, uh, but still, uh, we, 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 we just don't have a clear understanding uh, in terms of um, the different um, uh, species of animals that are infected by this uh, virus and what is actually um, the reservoirs. Uh, so we can do these things uh, if we have got um, um, enough capacity uh, in terms of um, uh, funding and also in terms of um, human capital uh, to conduct the, the research. So, so I think um, um, the answer is not going to be um, in one area. Um, and, and we have seen with COVID-19 uh, that um, we tend to talk about the things that we know we should be doing, but we are not doing. All right, let's talk about vaccines. Dr. Stephen, we've been hearing of smallpox vaccines being used against monkeypox. My question is, do we have vaccines manufactured specifically for monkeypox? And if yes, are there enough? Yeah, so with regards to uh, vaccine, it's still the, the um, smallpox vaccine, the M MVABN that was used previously for smallpox, a uh, newer generation, that has been approved for, for the prevention of uh, monkeypox uh, virus. And, and this is uh, currently available in, in the global north, uh, but not available for us uh, on the continent in Africa. As uh, we, we have discussed previously, uh, Africa has not really used uh, monkeypox vaccine for, for uh, um, prevention and control of uh, this uh, monkeypox uh, outbreak, it, it, it's, it's definitely not available to us. We didn't have it in our, in our national stock. But in addition to the vaccine, like uh, Prof. Elia said, we need to use the, the public health tools that are available to us. Surveillance, the issue of lab, clinical care, risk communication, to make sure that um, we are responding uh, to this outbreak at the appropriate level, but also continuing to build national capacity for uh, prevention and control of uh, different infectious diseases. So, Professor Mpahlele, uh, building up on what Professor Tomori is talking about, building capacity, uh, looking inwards, not outwards, where do we start from? I mean, this is a disease like we've been talking about that's been in this continent for five decades minimum. It is a zoonotic yeah. disease, and we understand the relationship that exists between Africans and animals in the continent. So where do we begin, and is it possible to completely eradicate it? No, no, no. Um, maybe to start with the, the last question, um, you can't eradicate a disease like um, uh, monkeypox, especially when you don't know the, the reservoirs. Uh, but the most important thing is that uh, monkeypox is a zoonotic uh, disease. In other words, uh, is a disease that is found in animals uh, and transmissible to humans. Uh, so um, there's no way that uh, you can eradicate it, you can contain it, you can eliminate it. 
but um, obviously uh, you need uh, public health measures, including uh, laboratory capacity uh, to identify cases and then and and then uh, be able to isolate the cases and uh, and 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 cut the transmission um, to other uh, members in the community. So where do we start uh, building capacity? We do have centers of excellence um, when it comes to capacity in Africa, um, in different regions of Africa. Um, sure. So you can you can you can you can strengthen these uh, centers of excellence uh, to make sure that uh, they are able to provide um, capacity to other countries that do not necessarily have capacity. Uh, but the most important thing is that um, uh, for every region in Africa, you should have a center of excellence or a couple of centers of excellence that are able to detect uh, various infectious diseases that are prevalent in Africa. So that when you have got an outbreak, um, you know exactly where to go um, to, to identify um, you know, the, 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 the agent involved uh, instead of um, um, just you know, being passive and, um, and waiting for the problem to build up uh, to a level when, where it becomes uh, unmanageable. And, and then only at that stage uh, you intervene. So, Professor Tomori, let's talk about stigma because this is a big talking point now that the world is talking about tackling a monkeypox. For instance, it's been labeled an African disease. So how do we raise public awareness around this disease without repeating those mistakes that we saw in the early days of HIV and AIDS? I think here both of us come in, the, edu the so-called educated people and the media. We need to you know, counter any false information with facts. We need to get back to the basic. For example, the monkeys that got infected first were actually imported from Singapore, not from Africa. So, and like I was telling somebody, if I was a monkey, I'll probably protest also, but that's a different story. And then, any of all the other diseases that have been happening, the situation in, 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 about the stigma, I think names don't stick. Is disease that kill. And therefore, we should not put emphasis on what names they're calling. Yeah, but counter those falsehood with facts. And we see now what is happening that with the situation that is spreading, uh, it is spreading. We made a mistake during uh, HIV. We were battling with, oh, no, this is a stigma. Why well, the disease was spreading among us? Let's tell our people, this is the information. Whatever thing that is coming, us, you remember when the whole story about monkeypox came? The pictures they were showing, even though the cases were happening in Europe, the pictures they were showing was the, was the face of, a, of an African. And I actually challenged one of them and said, look, the, the pox is your own pox. Why are you showing the picture of an African child when all the pox cases are happening in the West? And then everybody kind of kept quiet. We also need to know in Africa, I keep, I keep raising that point, we have the resources, we have the talent, we have the people. If we do our, spend our money well, we can solve our own problem with little help from our side. And we can sustain you know, the, the, the building of what we have. So again, the message to it is get proper information, work together with the scientists and the media and get that information to our people in the right way and the right language. Thank you very much, Professor Tomori. All right, and that's all for this edition of Talk Africa. A very big thank you to all our guests, Dr. Mary Stephen, the Africa Regional Technical Officer, the World Health Organization, Professor Jeffrey Mpahlele, Deputy Vice-Chancellor for Research and Innovation at the Northwest University, and Professor Oyewale Tomori, the President of the Nigerian Academy of Science and former Vice-Chancellor of Redeemers University. Remember, you can be a part of this conversation online through our social media handles on Facebook and Twitter. You can also catch the show on our YouTube playlist to keep the conversation going. And join us again next week for more Talk Africa. From me, Penina Karibe, and the team, K Nairobi. Until next time, it's goodbye.